Hey everyone, welcome to this video on structs. Not an easy word to say, but an easy concept to grasp. Struct is short for structure, and these structures provide better management of our variables. We're going to group things that are similar into one variable name. And then these are going to be really easy to pass between functions. Here's an example to help motivate this switch from using individual variable names to using structures as your variables. Here we have two robots. Robot one is named Jorge and robot two is named Armijo. And we have X, Y, and Z positions for these two robots. But now what if we wanted to know how far apart these two robots are? We define a function called RoboDist and we need to provide some inputs to solve for that distance. Here is the RoboDist function that I came up with. We need to give six inputs, x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2, and then go ahead and call the differences and square each of them while summing them all up to then take the square root. So let's go ahead and run this. We can call RoboDist, and then we have to provide a bunch of arguments. So we need to provide x Jorge, y Jorge, z Jorge, and this is where this gets really tedious. X Armijo, Y Armijo, and Z Armijo. Okay, if we run that, let's see if this works. There we go, we get our answer as 17.72. Again, this method is fine, but you can see now, what if all of a sudden we decided to add another element to this? What if it was four dimensions, right? Four dimensional space exists in matrix math, if we're not done with robots, we're just dealing with matrices. Now we have to add more arguments here. We have to give more arguments to this function every time, and it becomes exhaustive. Thus, structs have been introduced, and in fact, object-oriented programming in general handles this much better, but we're just looking at structs right now. We can kind of combine these robots into one variable. Why are they separate? Intrinsically, these guys are related because they're all part of Jorge. So let's make them all part of Jorge. And the notation becomes this. And we can replace the original stuff now with this robot notation using structs. And the struct is automatically going to be defined once we start using the dot x, dot y, dot z. MATLAB will know that we want a struct. I'm going to do the same thing with our Miho. And now our Miho is also set up as a structure. From here, this is the real advantage, right? This was still the same number of lines that we had to use before to define things, but instead now we can rewrite our function. We can rewrite this to just accepting two inputs, one for each robot. So we can do R1 and R2, robot one and robot two, and then we can specify r1.x and r2.x. Here our function is rewritten now with r1 and r2. We have the x, y's, and z's for each, and we only have to pass two parameters into this function. So now robodist, when we call it, we can get rid of all of this and simply provide Jorge and our Miho. We run this, and we get the same answer. 17.72. Let's take a look at the structures we've now defined. Take a look at the workspace and you can see we have our Miho and Jorge. Double click them and now we have these sub areas, these fields that MATLAB calls them, where our variables are stored. And these fields can be any data type. You can store strings in here. You can store other matrices in here. This is a great thing that you should take advantage of when you've got variables that are related to one object. In this case, our one robot that we wanted to assign parameters to. That's all for structs. Just remember to use this dot notation. It simplifies everything and keeps your variables cohesive in one object. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe and check out the rest of the channel for awesome videos. Cheers and have a good day.